Hello, my name is Matt Rabel, and this is a screencast showing you how to use Angular schematics to simplify your life. First of all, you should know that it's not actually called Angular schematics, but just schematics. It comes from the Angular project, however, so that's why it often gets tagged with Angular as a prefix. So this is based on a blog post that you see here and it has a github repo that shows the completed exercise that we're going to be doing today this demo.adoc is a list of steps that i will be using to show you this screencast and so to begin i'm just going to install angular cli which i already actually have installed so i can do ng version and you can see i'm using 732 so I can create a new Angular project using ng-new, call it my cool app, and you can pass in like routing, and it'll turn that on. If you don't do that, it'll actually prompt you, would you like to add Angular routing? I'll say yes, and then I'll just use CSS for the style sheet format. So you can see that took about 30 seconds to create. Schematics was actually used under the covers to create this project. So um, there's another schematic that's kind of cool. If you cd into my cool app, you can use ng-add, Octa Dev Schematics, and it'll actually prompt you for Octa things to configure your application to authenticate with Octa. By things, I mean configuration. So while that's going, we can create a new application with Octa. If you don't have an account, you can go to developer.octa.com and create one. And I can go to Applications and add one. And I'll do Single Page App, click Next. And then we'll just call this Angular Spa. And you'll want to change the URIs to be 4200 because that's the default port that Angular CLI runs on. And then you can click Done. And so then if you look under API Authorization Servers, you can get your OADC Apps Issuer URI from right here. That was under API authorization servers and then if you go back to your applications that you just created you'll have the client ID right there for you and so you'll see it added Okta Angular as a dependency that's our Okta's Angular SDK installed those packages and created a couple new files so now if we do ng serve we can open our browser to 4200 and you'll notice it switched from login to log out. So we're already logged in because we're logged in in here. So if we click sign out here, refresh our app, you'll notice we're still logged in. But if we click log out, then it'll log us out. And then if we click log in again, we can sign in and it redirects us back to our app and shows the log out button. So that shows that you have authentication working in an Angular app in just a couple minutes. Now let's create our own schematics. So Angular Dev Kit Schematics is the dependency that you'll need. I already have that installed. So you'll run schematics to create a blank project. So CD back out of there and do schematics blank and specify the name. We'll just use my component. That'll create a new schematics project for us. Now if we CD into there, we can open it up in IntelliJ. And if we look at the project, under the source directory is where it gets interesting. There's a collection.json, which defines your schematics. So this is just a blank schematic. And it points to this index.ts file, which gets compiled to JavaScript. And you'll see all it has is my component, and it returns a tree. So the tree is the notion of basically a virtual file system that you can manipulate and do all kinds of things with, create files, modify files, and then return it back, and uh, it'll make those modifications to an Angular project. There's also a test in here. We all like tests. So this merely says, hey, run that schematic, particularly this one, and make sure there's no files that are created. So that's the basics of it, and you can see if you run npm test, see where we are here. 
npm test. Everything should pass because we aren't creating anything. So let's make it a little more interesting. Let's go into the index.ts file. And let's go ahead and create a just hello.ts. So we'll use tree.create, specify the name of the file, and then specify what we want in it. So I'm going to use console.log hello world. And now if I run my test, it'll fail, right? Because it's creating a file and it expects it to be there. So if we switch back to our test, we can go ahead and modify that and say there's going to be a file that's created and it's going to be called hello.ts. Now if we run it, everything passes. All right. You can also run it using schematics dot for current directory or current project, my component. You'll see it creates it, but then if you do an ls, you see it's not actually there. So you have to turn off debug mode, dry dash run equals false, and then it'll create the file. And then if you try to run it again, you'll see it fails because the file already exists. So you need to account for that in your actual project. Let's make this a bit more interesting and let's use some templates. So you might create a schematic that copies in templates to a project. That's what we do with the Okta Dev Schematics project. It creates some configuration, it creates a landing page, and so on. So to do this, I'm going to create a directory first of all. Make there a dash p. That'll only work on Linux or Mac OS distributions. If you're using Windows, you might have to create all these directories uh, by hand. So my component files source app. And then in the app directory, I'm going to create an app.component.ts. So this will override the default app component ts that's generated by Angular CLI. And then that I'm going to just have a simple one. So by default, Angular CLI generates an app component that has title equals x. And this, I'm going to change that variable to name. And you'll notice there's some warnings here about, hey, you know, cannot find module Angular core. That's because we're not actually compiling these templates in our project. We want to compile them in the destination project. So you can ignore any template errors at this point. We'll create another file in here, an HTML file to read it, app.component.html. And we'll just say hello name and then we'll include that router outlet in there. The next thing you'll want to do is create a schema.json that you can put prompts in. So you see here's one that I created in my component schema and it just prompts for a name. So once it has that name as a property then it can substitute it into those templates. So you might be wondering how did I generate that code so fast. If you look up at the top here, you'll see that I have IntelliJ Live templates that I'm using. So I pre-recorded some code snippets and this allows me to play them back. If you would like to use them yourself for your, your project or your demo, um, this repo shows you how you can import them and use them in your IntelliJ instance. So the other thing once you create that schema.json is you need to go and add it to your collection definition. So this will be my component schema.json. So now it knows about it. It knows to prompt for those values. And we need to install schematics Angular since we're going to use those in a test to actually generate a project and then run this schematic against it. So npm install, put it as a dev dependency, schematics Angular. And then you'll modify index.ts to do a couple things. First of all, we want to set up uh, the project's path. So you see we set up a few options there. We get a workspace which is provided by that schematics angular project and then we can get a project from that and then we can basically get the path that we're going to put the files into. And now we want to call that here. So set up options, 
pass in the tree, pass in the options. And then we can delete this line. And then we're going to want to write some code to actually move the templates from this schematic into the Angular CLI project. So we've got a bunch of imports. You can see most of them are in that dev kit schematics project. And this is the API that you can use to basically do all this work and uh, do it with only about you know 35 lines of code. So we set up the options and then we basically get the path we're going to move things to. We get the source of where our files are and then we specify those templates and we pass in the options so it has that name and it can use that and then we move them and then we merge it with the template source. We overwrite everything and it all should work. So now we need to update the test. I'm just going to update the whole thing and then we'll walk through it. So this is still describing the my component. This is how you set up a path to your collections and the schematic runner, schematic test runner from Angular Dev Kit. And then these are workspace options, app options, and actual schema options. So these are things that would normally be set by Angular CLI, but since we're using them in a test, they're not quite set up. So before each, we're going to run schematics Angular and create a workspace. And then we'll go ahead and pass that app tree into schematics Angular and create an application. So this is what Angular CLI does for you. And then once we have that going, we can create a new schematics test runner down here and run my component as the schematic. And you'll see we're running it async and then we're converting it to a promise and then we're reading from the tree. So we're reading that app component.ts was created and we're expecting it to contain that name. So if we've done anything wrong, it'll contain title instead and this will fail. So we can run npm test see if it actually worked. So it does work. We're actually copying those files. We're seeing them in there and we're able to read their contents. So now the thing I like to do is test with an actual CLI project. So we'll go ahead and run ng new. We'll call this one my test app since we already created my cool app. And we'll specify routing and we'll specify style. And so you can do this with your schematic as well. If you have a name property, then you can do dash dash name, specify the value, and all that will work. So it created a new project for us. Now we can go into that, my test app, and you can use npm link to link back to your schematic. So my component, and then it'll install that in the project and you can use it. So we could do ngg my component, and then the name of the schematic you want to run. And I'll just say my name. And you'll see it says, hey, these files already exist, even though we said to override them. So to fix that, you can add this for each that basically loops through each file and overwrites it if it exists. So even though we're saying overwrite, it's not quite working. So there's an issue here. You can track that. Um, you might not have to do that in the future. So now we can go back to our schematic my component, make sure we saved it, and then npm run build. Go back to our project, my test app, and run the same command again. And you'll notice this time it actually overwrites those files, so it does update them. If we were to do a git diff, you could see that it says you know different things. So. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, one thing I do want to tell you is if you were to go to MP, my, my component and actually publish this module, that's equivalent to an npm pack. And so it creates, you see that tgz file. And then if we go back to our project, my test app, and you install it that way, right? My component and my component targz. This is actually a better representation of what happens after you publish it to NPM.
because you'll see a bit of a difference. If I were just to run my component, my component, it only actually overwrites one file instead of two. The reason for that is because by default, npm ignores all .ts files. And since our templates are .ts files, it won't actually publish that. So very important to remove that. Um, and I have that in the tutorial as well as in these steps here um, because it was a big problem for me. It took me several hours to figure that out. And it was such a small change. You should know if you do publish, you can unpublish within 72 hours. So don't be afraid to publish and try it out that way and then unpublish if you made a mistake. The other thing I wanted to show you is you can actually add in this collection.json the ability to actually instead of do ngg or run it with a schematic command line you can do ng add and then you only have to have the first part of your schematics name. So in here we can do schematics ng add and you'll see it has a different factory same description or you know whatever you want to put in there and then it points to the same schema so it'll still prompt you for a name and then we can create a new schematic basically and we'll call this one ng add and we'll put an index.ts and this is very simple you can see it just exports a default function it looks very similar to when we had nothing but it calls our schematic so it's basically providing a shortcut to get to your schematic. Uh, the other thing is, in here you can actually add uh, aliases. Um, so you can make it very simple. Instead of typing my component, you can just type M. Um, I'm not going to do that. But the cool thing is now you can go back to your schematics project, run npm run build. Oh, I didn't like it. Oh, you got to do npm install for some reason. I did have this issue before and now if I run npm build it works fine and then if I go back to I can do npm pack and then we'll go back to my test app and we'll do npm install and we'll point to my component and that targz file and then we can do ng add my component so a little bit easier, a little bit of a nicer shortcut. And there you are. So that's the gist of my tutorial here. You can find all the source code with everything that we did today on GitHub. You can find me on Twitter at mrabel. You can find my team at Octadev. And you can go to developer.octa.com to create a free account today. Lastly, I would invite you to follow us on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, with lots of videos, lots of screencasts like this one, and I think you'll enjoy it a fair amount. So scroll through, have some fun, and have a great day.